What's going on, everyone? Zach Patra with the NFL Draft Bible on Sports Illustrated here joining you guys on this fine Tuesday to talk about the latest 2022 NFL mock draft that we got up on the NFL Draft Bible right now. You can go check that out, si.com backslash NFL backslash draft. This one was a little bit interesting, a little bit different. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are doing a mock draft that's going to be involving trades. And I specifically did five trades because we usually talk about five prospects. So I want to discuss these trades and some of these prospects that ended up getting picked with these trades. So we're going to get right into it here pretty quickly here. But first of all, make sure you go and leave the show a five-star rating. Let us know how we're doing in the comments section. I would love to chat it up with you guys. It's draft season, the Hula Bowl is in the books. The Tropical Bowl is in the books. Uh, College Gridiron Showcase is in the books. The first round of the playoffs are in the books. Now, I'm recording this Monday, so I don't know if the Rams or the Cardinals end up winning. I'm pulling for the Rams, though. I kind of, I want, you know, being a Vikings fan, I still, I even though that Matt Stafford was a Lion, I still really like him. So I want to see him have a good run in the playoffs. Obviously, we saw the Bills win. Uh, the Chiefs are moving on. Uh, we got a lot of the, the Bengals, man. I want to see the Bengals have a deep playoff run this year. That Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow tandem is looking good. That defense has to make sure they stay on, stay in check here. But um, it's looking like it's going to be a good, uh, good playoff year this year. You know, it's uh, you, you get you get a few of these different teams in here, and and uh, you know, like the Bengals, you got the Raiders rocking and rolling. You got uh, well, they're out of it now, but they were in it. Um, you got the Bills beating the Patriots, you know, all that fun stuff here. So I'm excited for the playoffs, but I'm even more excited to talk draft with you guys today. So again, make sure you go check that latest mock draft out. They got the they got the Giants going, uh, jumping up to pick number one. We don't know who their GM is. We don't have their coach yet, but you know, you never know. Maybe these guys jump up to go to get number one, get a quarterback uh, to replace Daniel Jones. Uh, maybe they get a, an elite pass rusher like Kayvon Thibodeau. Or Aiden Hutchinson, uh, you know who knows where they go. You gotta go, gotta go check it out. But we're gonna talk about a few of these trades. I'll break them down for you here. Um, you can also check that out. I posted on Twitter. It should be my pinned tweet there. You can go follow uh, me NFL underscore Zach. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's all over the place. It's NFL underscore Zach. Uh, so make sure you head over there and check it out. Also follow the the website at NFL Draft Bible at all social media platforms as well. Rock and roll on there. So. Uh, here we go. Let's get into it. Let's talk about some of these trades um, that we got going on here. And you can you can roast me a little bit. There were you know not, not many people liked some of the trades, but that's okay. I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. That's the fun part of these mock drafts. You know we can't can't take them too seriously. We got to have a little bit uh, a little bit of fun now and then, uh, just to try to shake and bake a little bit of this stuff up here. So let's get into the trades. Jacksonville ends up trading their first overall overall pick, the first pick in the draft to the Giants. The Giants are giving up their two first-round picks, and, and in, in exchange, they're getting the first overall pick and uh, the third-round uh, pick from Jacksonville here. And then another trade here, we got Detroit. So we got the first overall pick, and we got the second overall pick uh, being traded here. So Detroit ends up trading uh, their first uh, pick, their second overall pick here, uh, to the Carolina Panthers. Detroit's going to end up getting a 2022 first, a fourth, and a 2023 second back from Carolina. Uh, and they will give their first uh, this year and their seventh this year uh, in exchange. There, we know that Carolina does not have a lot of uh, a lot of picks to be trading with this year. They have one pick in the top 100, which is not looking good for where they sit. Um, but so they they go up, they try to get their uh, their guy. Um, I'm not going to tell you who. You got to go check it out. That's not going to be a guy we talked about. I actually talked about him last week. Uh, so if you want to go back and listen to Monday's show to see uh, who that is, you can feel free to do so. Um, but I know uh, Carolina's got to get some help, uh, you know, just about everywhere there. Second overall, do they, uh, do they take a quarterback? Do they, uh, do they take an edge rusher? Go check it out. Um, and then another trade, Arizona ends up coming up, uh, and grabbing the 2022 first from the Jets. Um, I believe it's 10th overall, the, the 10th overall pick. I believe the, the, well, the Jets have two picks, but they ended up trading the 10th overall pick here, uh, to the Cardinals. The Cardinals give up their their first and their 2022 second to come all the way up from where they're sitting at. Uh, and then another trade, Buffalo comes up uh, to grab Cleveland's first-round pick. Buffalo is going to give up their first-round pick, uh, their 2022 third and a 2023 third. 
which is interesting because uh, you know who they who Buffalo ends up taking here. I, I you know I spoke with a Bills fan. I, I got a Bills fan that writes for us as well. A um, little bit interesting. Uh, their thoughts on it. They they liked it and disliked it at the same time for who they got uh, with the trade up. Uh, I personally liked it. it. Gives them some versatility, especially with a guy like Jerry Hughes that could be potentially leaving uh, in offseason, being an unrestricted free agent. Um, so I you know go check out who they took. And then the last trade that I have is Philly coming up uh, to take Atlanta's first round pick. Uh, Philly ends up giving their first and second round pick in this draft up, and then Atlanta gives their first and their fifth up. <laughs> up. And I like who Philly takes here. I think. Uh, I think we're going to talk about the Philly one. We're going to talk about the Philly pick. Uh, uh, of course, it's the eighth overall pick uh, that they got from Atlanta here. So let's dive into the five prospects that we're going to talk about. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced this one, it's the North Carolina State offensive tackle, Ikem Akwanu. I am terrible with names, and I'm sorry if I butchered that, but we're going to talk about him. Jackson Villains have taken him at five. Uh, and Philly at number eight takes George Karlaftis. That's the trade with Atlanta that they end up going up and get, getting. Arizona goes up to 10 to take Derek Stingley from, uh, I'm already spacing out who I just said, the Jets. <laughs> they got the Jets' t- uh, first overall pick, or first round pick, the 10th overall pick there. Uh, they end up taking Stingley. And then we got Daxton Hill, the Michigan safety, going to the Jets at 24. And then we got... Devin Lloyd going to Cleveland at 26, which was that trade with Buffalo that I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> but we're going to get into all those guys. But again, be sure you check out uh, all the other shows that are coming up here. Uh, we got the we got Dynasty Fantasy Football, Debbie Fantasy Football. I know the Debbie guys with John and Matt, they're doing a fantastic job with the Senior Bowl coverage there. Make sure you're checking all those out. Uh, you got the Prospect Profits and just a ton of great shows that are coming up here, um, and as well as readable content that you can find on the site. We're, we're trying to incorporate a lot of this uh, podcast and video shows that we're doing here onto the website, so you can always check them out on the website, si.com slash NFL slash draft. Bunch of great content over there. Please check it out. You will not be sorry. You will thank me later. I promise you all the draft news you want. Underclassmen, uh, they have all enter their name declared January 17th is the it was the deadline for that so we got that all listed for you we got all the all-star games we got the measurements I swear we're like the first ones to get measurements up so you're welcome and we are getting the draft order up we got team needs up uh, so make sure you're checking all that out as well as the mock draft Mondays that we talk about every single Tuesday which we're going to get into now the North Carolina offensive tackle <clears throat> let's talk about him we got Jacksonville taking him at number five here with the trade back uh, with the Giants. And we talked about last week, Jacksonville ends up taking uh, an offensive tackle last week um, at, at first overall. Uh, this week, we obviously, like I said, had them trade back to five, and they end up taking another offensive tackle, a different off- offensive tackle. It's the North Carolina State uh, offensive tackle. And I just, I, I got to reiterate a little bit of what we talked about last week, just the fact that Jacksonville needs an offensive lineman. They gave up, I think it was like 30, 32 sacks, somewhere around there last time I looked. Um, and they just got to they got to focus on protecting Trevor Lawrence. He's your franchise quarterback. He's he's a stud. I know he didn't have the year we were all hoping for, but Trevor Lawrence is a great quarterback. And I know we got to think about getting him some weapons as well, wide receivers. Uh, they, they're set at running back, but we got to look at protecting him first. And there's plenty of wide receivers. You're not going to take a wide receiver this high, first of all. Second of all, there's so many good wide receivers in, in this draft class. When you, you, you look at some of the second, third round. Players such as like a David Bell, a John Mechie, you know, I think George Pickens probably ends up going in the second round. Um, so there's a lot of options that, that they could take here at the top of the second round. So, you know, there, does their defense need help? Absolutely. You know, you, you go back, look at the draft of, of where they, of the defensive players that they skipped on in this draft. But I do think that we need to focus on getting them an offensive lineman, help get our boy Trevor Lawrence, who, you know, we got to get, we got to develop him and help develop him. And the only way to do that is is to help him out on the offensive line, get him some more protection. I I like the thought of them taking up an offensive tackle. I think there's some really good ones in this class. Whether you look at uh, a Quanwu, terrible at names again, sorry. Uh, whether you look at Evan Neal, whether you look at Trevor Penning, Charles Cross, lots of solid names across the offensive line that I do think it would be a viable option for the Jags to trade out of the first overall pick because 
you know, you got Kayvon Thibodeau, who's who's going to be he's going to be a really good player. George Karlaftis, you got um, Aiden Hutchinson, you got David Ajabo, you know, a lot of good pass rushers, a lot of good defensive linemen. But I want to I want to get these guys an offensive lineman to you know to to help protect uh, Trevor Lawrence, and they're going to be losing Cam Robinson. They're going to be losing uh, their center, their guard, one of their guards, and their left guard. Uh, uh, there's space my name right now, but anyway, um, it's it's just it needs to we need to get a guy like Aquanu into this uh, system here in Jacksonville. Let's let's protect Trevor Lawrence. Aquanu played left guard, played some left tackle in college. He's an aggressive player, gets really good push, tremendous overall strength, finishes his blocks consistently, which I just love from an offensive lineman. He's always the always always you can't always, you can't you can't use always when you're talking about prospects. You know just. You can't. So forget I said always. Consistently, he'll finish his blocks. Consistently, he initiates the first strike, and he's just explosive with those hands, with power, with strength. Um, he's also explosive out of, out of his stance, which you like to see. A strong anchor. Um, he, he absorbs good power from defensive linemen. And he understands how to create leverage. Now, can be a little bit off balance, plays a, plays a little bit too over his toes, uh, can, play, can get his hands a little bit too wide, which, get, which gets his chest attacked. Uh, and he needs to learn to reset his hands. So there's some things he still needs to work on, but I love this pick. I love getting an offensive line, lineman for the Jags here. Let's let's get T. Law some some help, some protection. Get uh, James Robinson, Travis Etienne. Get those guys some running lanes to open here. I love I love the pick on Quanu. Quanu, man, I I'm gonna have the hardest time pronouncing his name, and I just I just I apologize first and foremost. But anyway, we'll move on to a name I can pronounce. And that would be Purdue's defensive end, George Karlaftis, who Philly ends up coming up and taking at number eight. You look at Philly and who they could lose in the offseason. You look at uh, Derek Barnett, Ryan Kerrigan. Uh, you're going to lose some some quality pass rushes here. Derek Barnett has been there, you know, since he's been drafted, uh, and he's he's been a really solid piece for them. A um, little bit of an attitude on that guy, but that's all right. <laughs> but George Karlaftis comes in. You need to get a guy who can generate a good pass rush, can be a good run stopper. George Karlaftis has a lot of tools that you can work with here, a lot of a lot of potentials. He's been extremely efficient in college, uh, generate, generating a lot of pressure, uh, being, a, being a solid run defender, could get a little bit better in the run, but um, overall a, a very good player. Can play uh, just about any type of scheme. You want to put him in a 43, you want to put him in a 34. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you want to play him. He's not scheme dependent. I think this is a guy that can play um, anywhere on the defensive line, no matter what you have for a defensive scheme in in my opinion he's a better 43 n type of role uh but again he's very uh not he's very not <laughs> scheme dependent here i think this is a guy that can play uh anywhere on the defensive line he's a guy that initiates contact good length uh great hand power great power behind those hands uh he'll strike first and and, and he'll win pretty quickly best uh he's best as a power rusher uh great job at attacking inside shoulders creating leverage for himself He's got really good heavy hands and a good mix of speed for a guy of his size. I like the way he moves for a guy that's uh, as big as he, as he is. Um, some really good heavy hands there, so I like that a lot. Um, he'll get the get the lineman off there, get get the lineman on their heels, and he'll exploit that uh, that that balance that he can cause the issue with balance that he can cause. So uh, I, I like George Karlaftis. I think this brings another level of uh, of intensity, of strength, of power, uh, just another level of. Uh, versatility on a defensive line like Philly needs. I mean, there's a lot of things that Philly needs. Let's be real. We saw Philly get just whomped on by by Tampa Bay by the Bucks this this weekend. Um, so we gotta get we gotta start creating more pressure. We gotta start plugging up running lanes. Um, and I think this is what's gonna be best for them is is attacking a guy like George Kalaptis. They have the they have the power to do so with their draft capital. Um, they you know, uh, do they stick with Jalen Hurts? It sounds like they want to. I'm not a huge Jalen Hurts fan. I'll go I'll go on the record and say that right now. I'm not the biggest Jalen Hurts believer uh, at quarterback. So I know a lot of people want to take quarterbacks for for Philly. I know Philly doesn't, but uh, some people want to take uh, a quarterback for Philly. But I'm on board with keeping Jalen Hurts for another year, seeing how he progresses, seeing how he develops for another year under this offense, and. I'll be 100% transparent on it right now, too. I just don't think that the quarterback class this year, outside of a guy like Kenny Pickett, who I like a lot, I just don't think that there's a guy that's much head and shoulders better. You know, Matt Corral, Carson Strong, Malik Willis, uh, Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter. I don't see those guys head and shoulders above Jalen Hurts. So let's stick with Jalen Hurts. Let's go with a guy like George Karlaftis. Let's jump up. Let's get their guy, especially if they're losing 
Derek Barnett, uh, who I think I think uh, George Karlaftis can do a good job replacing. So um, I like this pick for Philly. It might be a little bit of, uh, a, a little aggressive, but number eight going to George Kalaftis. I mean, that's a little bit of a drop off if you if you, uh, if you think about it a little bit too. So if he starts falling just a little bit like that, I could definitely see a team like Philly coming up and getting him. So we'll move on. Um, we'll talk about Derek Stingley here. He was taken by Arizona at number ten, who came up and got him from the Jets. I believe I'm going to go back and double check that just because I'm second guessing myself. Yes. The Jets. They traded with the Jets, came up and got Derek Stingley who dealt with some injuries uh, this year, dealt with uh, COVID issue the year before. Um, I can't remember if he sat out just because of the concerns of COVID or if it was because he had COVID. I don't, I don't recall off the top of my head. Sorry, but um, Arizona's coming up and getting Derek Stingley. They need to get a number one type of cornerback, a top cornerback for their team. Cards have allowed 30 passing touchdowns. They've generated just 13 interceptions. 13 interceptions isn't terrible, but the 30 passing touchdowns I don't like to see. Um, allowing a 93.5 passer rating and over 3,600 passing yards. So they are middle of the road at best, about average, a um, little, little under average when, when you look at those stats. So they got to get a they got to get a corner. And LSU's corner, Derek Stingley, has been a stud since he came into Louisiana. His freshman year, he was phenomenal. Uh, he obviously didn't play last year, and then this year dealt with some injuries. But there's so much to like when you look at Derek Stingley. His athleticism and the length that he possesses, he has been a star since he stepped on campus. His instincts, his quick reaction skills are phenomenal. His ability to carry routes vertical with great speed, his patience in off coverage and understanding when to fire downhill with burst and explosion, uh, great spatial awareness in zone. He's Like I said, he's patient in off coverage. His understanding of uh, of, of, of zone spacing is phenomenal. Great ball skills, his ability to track the ball in the air, understands when to go attack that ball in the air, and he's a willing tackler in the run game, which you just love to see. Now, obviously, no prospect perfect. There's obviously a, a few things that he can work on. He gets he can overreach and press coverage. He can get too grabby grabby downfield. You know, some things that you can work on, but things that are coachable. And he, you know, he's he's a guy that if you coach some of the stuff out of him, he's going to be a very good corner. This is one of the better quarterback classes that we've seen in a while. Whether you look at Derek Stingley, you look at Ahmad Gardner, uh, you know Kyler Gordon, uh, Trent McDuffie, you know Andrew Booth. I mean, I'm just naming names off the top of my head right now. It is a really solid corner class. But Derek Stingley, in my opinion, is cornerback one. There could be a case for Ahmad Gardner. There could be there could be a case for Andrew Booth. I know, but Derek Stingley is the top corner in this class, and. If you don't want to sit and wait for him back at whatever pick they got, what is it, 24, 25, 26, somewhere around there, you can wait for a corner, but you're not going to get a corner like a Derek Stingley. So I really don't mind them going up and getting this guy, um, giving up a you know their first round pick and their second round pick might be a little bit steep of a price. I, you know, obviously when you look at the numbers, it's about a, a bit even, but I don't know. Do the Cardinals want to give up their second round pick? to go up and Derek, get Derek Stingley. I think they should. That's why I did it. So I like the pick a lot. Um, we're going to move on. Daxon Hill, Michigan, safety to the New York Jets for 24 here. Now you look at the Jets and who they could lose uh, in free agency. You could lose Marcus May, one of the one of, one of the better safeties in the NFL. You got to fill that role. And I think Daxon Hill will do a great job doing so. Hill has flashed in the run game, in the passing game. He's not afraid of being physical. He has great burst, great acceleration. He's a heavy hitter and athletic. Now the issue with him being a heavy hitter and a safety and what he does, he's got a lighter frame. He's got a thin frame. He's not this big, bulky dude, but he's not afraid to use that body that he's got. Now, you get him in the NFL, you get him into a workout routine, a, an eat, eating regimen. This is a guy that's going to be able to bulk up, put some good muscle on, and use that physicality to the best of his ability. And then you add that short area of quickness, his athleticness to stay with receivers, his ability to adjust in zone coverage with fluid hips, with that uh, flexibility, that athleticism. He's a natural athlete. There's so much that he can do, and I love this pick for the Jets because we got to get them some help on defense. We also got to get them some receivers for uh, Zach Wilson, their young quarterback. Who, by all accounts, man, you look at what Zach Wilson did with like the I think it was like the last five or six games. You know, if I remember off the top of my head, I mean, this guy was doing a great job and was showing great development. So I'm hoping that we see a guy like Zach Wilson, who I got to meet when I was down in Cleveland. Seems like a really nice kid. Plus, he's got the name Zach. That's a fantastic name. Anyway, he, he he's a guy that's going to need some weapons. But I think you grab a guy like Marcus May, you get uh, a receiver 
at, at the top of the second round. Um, this is a, this is a great pick here. Get, grabbing De- uh, Daxton Hill, Daxton Hill, uh, the Michigan safety here, I think is is a great pick here. So uh, they're building up their defense. They're going to get better uh, as years progress. Uh, Jets fans are going to have a lot to look forward to when it comes to a guy like Daxton Hill. If they end up trading down to the twenties here, I think it'd be a great pick for them to go with Daxton. And we're going to move on to the very last guy before we close out the show, a guy that I like a lot. I watched him a bunch at Utah. They're outside linebacker. They're middle linebacker. He could play wherever there's a, there, he, he brings a strong presence anywhere on the, uh, on the second level here. Devin Lloyd, the Utah linebacker gets selected by Cleveland at number six when they traded down with the bills. I love this pick for them because they really, they've missed a linebacker, a strong linebacker presence since Joe Sherbert left. Uh, I believe he's in Jacksonville now, if I remember. Again, off the top of my head. But he's a very versatile player. He's He projects well as a Mike or a Will in the NFL. That Will presence because he is a good coverage linebacker. Struggles a little bit in certain areas, but I think he's a solid linebacker uh, in, in coverage where you can play him as a Will. You can start him as a Mike. Uh, he, can, he can fill in as a, as a run defender, as a man coverage guy, as a zone coverage guy. But again, some things he needs to clean up, like his eye discipline when it comes to um, – getting downhill and, and going into rushing uh, running lanes because uh gets a little bit of tunnel vision i'd call it tunnel vision he, he'll he fly downhill and uh you'll you'll get the running back that'll bounce it to a different gap and i just think he needs to get a little bit better with his gap inte- gap integrity as a linebacker uh, a couple false steps i've seen as, as a guy that's in man coverage and his uh just overall eye discipline in zone coverage but overall a very good player in zone coverage i like him uh, more than I don't like him in zone coverage. I think he's a guy that uh, understands spatial awareness. He understands where receivers are going, understands routes, understands how to read the quarterback and react. Um, he's got quick hands. His, his, he's got great length to, to avoid blockers, especially at that second level. And he's a springy type of athlete. His ability to change change directions on a dime. Um, he's a guy that you're going to really want as, a, as, a, as an athletic type of linebacker at the next level. I think he's going to project well to the NFL and his ability to carry slot receivers. Like he's got the speed, he's got the quickness, the burst, the explosion uh, in his lower body to be able to carry the, those smaller, those shifty, those quick uh, type of wide receivers. So I like Devin Lloyd uh, mainly as a cover guy. I think he's mainly a cover guy, but I also like him as a run defender, despite the lack of eye discipline. I just think there's a lot to work with when you look at a guy like Devin Lloyd. So taking him here for Cleveland, I think is a big get. It's a, it's, a, it's a very, very good get. You help out that defense, um, you know, behind a guy behind guys like Miles Garrett. Um, I think it's a, it's a great choice for them to take a linebacker here. So that's going to do it for the show. Make sure you go and check out the mock draft on si.com backslash NFL backslash draft. I'm going to make sure to put it at the top of the page for you guys tomorrow so it's easy to find. You can view the trades, the breakdowns of the trades, the scouting reports of each player that was selected in this first round. I also kept some links in there for you guys to check out uh, the updated draft order. I'll be sure to update that after the Rams and Cardinals game, but it's updated after the weekend's game. We got team needs, which breaks down each position that every NFL team needs, as well as important free agents that they could lose that are unrestricted free agents. Um, so that, that goes a lot into the team needs. Make sure you listen to the rest of the shows this week. It's Tuesday today, so we still got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday shows going up. Make sure you check out each and every one of those. We got just about 500 and some scouting reports, I believe, up. And what's cool, too, is we got with the fantasy guys this year, and we're going to be doing uh, fantasy profiles. So I know guys like Isaiah Spiller, Brees Hall, um, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks. These guys have fantasy profiles built in to their scouting reports. So you get a little bit of double dipping when you go and check out those scouting reports too. You get the fantasy side, you get the NFL side. It's fantastic. I love to see it. Make sure you're checking out our rankings with the deadline on the 17th. So it's past us now by the time you're listening to this. We're going to have our rankings updated here coming up this month. We got the NFL PA Bowl coming up this month, which we will be down at. I will be down at the Senior Bowl. Uh, the Shrine Bowl, we'll, we'll have our main man Rick out there. Uh, again, we got the Hula Bowl, Tropical Bowl, CGS measurements up on the website. We'll have all this up on the website. We'll have all the measurements updated in the rankings, which if the All-Star game has passed, it already is up. So make sure you're checking all, out all those and more at si.com slash NFL slash draft. Again, we're going to end the show. We had a lot. I mean, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot, a lot of fun learning about these prospects here. Uh, make sure you follow me at NFL underscore Zach on all social media platforms. Be sure to follow the website, NFL Draft Bible. And then make sure you follow the show too, NFL 
Draft Bible podcast. Um, we'll be dropping those here. Uh, we'll be getting these shows out and rocking and rolling. And again, I appreciate you guys joining me today, this fine Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, or whatever day you decided to listen to the show. And again, check out the website, si.com slash NFL slash draft. That'll do it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Enjoy the, uh, the NFL playoffs. Enjoy the All-Star games. Draft season is here, folks. So we'll be covering you 24-7, 365 every single day. It's what we do. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you.